Welcome to 3D Generators. Surface Operators, or SOPs, are the operator family we use to create and modify 3D geometry natively inside of Touch Center. To get started, we're going to look at some of the most commonly used SOP generators, so let's use the tab key to open up our OpCreate dialog. Now, as a quick reminder, generators are operators that add new information to our Touch Center networks, and we can always spot them inside of the OpCreate dialog by looking for operators that have a slightly darker color. Let's grab a sphere and add it to our network. Now, I'd like to squash my sphere here a little bit, so I'm going to head over to the parameters for my sphere. I'm going to hold down the middle mouse button instead of the radius Y uh, parameter, and I'm going to drag to the left, and this is going to squash down my sphere. Let's make our operator viewer active. We can do that either with the uh, viewer active toggle in the bottom right hand corner, or we can use the A key to toggle on viewer active. Now we can use the left mouse button to tumble our view, the right mouse button to pan our view, or the middle mouse button to zoom in and out. If we ever lose our orientation, we can use the H key to home our view for our surface operator. There's some more information I might want to see when I'm looking at a surface operator. For example, I might want to use the W key to switch to a wireframe view uh, to get a better sense of the geometry that makes up my surface operator. Or I might want to use the right mouse button to bring up my display options so I can see things like the position of the points that make up my surface operator or the normals that are associated with the points uh, and vertices that make up my surface operator. Let's go ahead and close that for now. Now there's one other set of information that I might want to have access to, and that's some more kind of deep details about my geometry. I can use the info button here on my parameters, or I can middle mouse click on my operator to see things like the number of times it's cooked, the last time it's cooked, the number of points, primitives, vertices, or meshes that make up my geometry, as well as its size, center, and bounds. All of these things are useful when we're thinking about working in 3D, and that's only a middle mouse button away. Let's go ahead and look at another operator. I'm going to use the tab key and add a torus now to my network. Now a torus typically looks like a donut, but from this view it kind of looks like a jelly bean, and that's because we're just looking at it sideways. We can change the orientation of our torus uh, by changing the orientation parameter to change how it's positioned spatially. If we just want to change our view, we could also make it viewer active and pan around. Now we could also change the radius parameters if we want to change some of the look of our torus here. Um, and part of the fun of interacting uh, with our surface operators is having an opportunity to see how they change and uh, grow as we interact with them. Now, we'll notice that we have a parameter here called rows and columns, and when I change these parameters, I don't see a whole lot change. So let's go ahead and use the W key to turn on the wireframe. And now when we change rows, we've got a better sense of what's happening inside of our torus's geometry when we, change, when we change that parameter. Let's look at another surface operator. Let's use the tab key and bring up a box sop. Now a box sop looks just like a regular cube. We can go ahead and turn on the viewer active mode to toggle around here or to ta um, tumble around here. Now, this looks pretty normal, um, but other ways that we might use a, uh, a box op is uh, more than just kind of a cube. We might think about the fact that maybe what we actually want to think about are divisions. So we want to understand this as a kind of arrangement of smaller boxes that make up this volume. So we could use our divisions flag to do that. Let's look at a few more operators here. Let's use the tab key and bring up a circle sop. A circle, like the name suggests, is just a circle. And let's make that viewer active so we can see a few more uh, interesting things about it. This time, I'm going to go ahead and right click. I'm going to bring up my display options and I'm going to turn on my points. With my points on, we'll see that when I change the number of divisions for my circle, uh, I'm really changing up the, are changing and modifying the number of divisions that make up. Uh, the number of points that comprise my circle. So this can be really helpful when we want to do things like maybe create uh, triangles or other pieces of geometry um, just by changing the number of divisions. Now we could also do something uh, as well here. We could turn up our divisions and maybe what we want to do instead is have a closed arc. And with this parameter set, we can now change our uh, ending position because maybe instead we want just like uh, a half circle here instead. Let's take a look at just a few more operators before we leave here. Let's use the tab key and look at a tube sop. Our tube is really useful and interesting because we can use this for all sorts of applications. Now, 
Uh, by default, we see that we don't have any end caps, but we'll notice that we had, if we head to the detail page, we can turn on end caps. If we want to add a top and bottom here to our tube, we can also do things, for example, like change the radius of either side. So we can do things like create cones or arrows. And if we head back to the detail page, we could also turn down our rows and columns that will let us create things like pyramid shapes. This can be really helpful if we ever want to create things like arrows uh, or diamonds or other kinds of shapes like that. Finally, let's look at a rectangle and a grid. Now, the rectangle and the grid are both similar uh, in their construction in terms of they both are going to look uh, almost like the same thing. Uh, and we really need to turn on our wireframe view for both of these operators to have a better sense of what's happening. And we can see here that our rectangle is only ever going to be made up of four points. So our rectangle doesn't have any notation of a kind of subdivision for its surface, whereas our grid does have this subdivided surface. This is really helpful whenever we're thinking about building surfaces uh, or building elements that we might want to treat as either wireframes um, or irregular or regular surfaces. Sometimes we want to put an image just on a single rectangle, uh, almost like it's a billboard, which a rectangle stop is perfect for that. And we might want to use a grid for instances where we want to think about all of these intersections, maybe stretch them out um, or create more or less density. There are lots of ways that we can use surface operators, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. And hopefully this gives you a sense of the kinds of operators that you might work with uh, when we think about 3D primitives.